Hello everybody. Welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today we're going to do a fast and loose watercolor painting. Um, literally as I press the start button on this, I had the bright idea of playing with a two color palette. So this is my first time trying this one. We're going to do Sap Green and this is Da Vinci brand Sap Green which is a mixture of PG7 and PY42. So it's, I think, thalo green and I'm not sure what the four, PY42 is. It's a yellow. And the Cotman Alizarin Crimson U. This is pigment PR206. So we have a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua. I just saturated it with water right before I started filming. And then we're just going to experiment fast and loose with those two colors. I don't think I've ever even mixed those two, so we'll see what happens with it. And we'll kind of just use that quick tonalist fast and loose additive and subtractive process. Um, what I'm going to do before I mix, I have found with the two colored paintings playing around. If I use one as kind of like a background color first, that does show through at the end pretty in, in an interesting fashion. So I'm just going to put some alizarin crimson first and then we'll mix it up and apply. Composition wise, we're going to do a landscape. I have nothing really in my mind with this. It's mixing a muddy brownish red color. So it's very similar to the Venetian red and sap green combo. I think originally that's what I was gonna go for, but we'll just play around and have fun. I don't use alizarin and crimson enough, so it'll be nice to See if it can almost have an exclusive two color um, you know, combination. So making up the scene, putting in a little bit of background elements. We'll do one of our patented moody inner um, forest type deal. And we'll just let the image take shape. This technique I kind of adopted from um, the watercolor, the oil painter, sorry, uh, Stuart Davies and David Usher and um, Dennis Sheehan, kind of just a fast and loose application, a wiping back and forth of color. Um, there's also a gentleman, Mind of Watercolor, who has some videos that he calls his spontaneous paintings. Um, I think that's one of the cats playing on the door. Anyway, so Mind of Watercolor has his uh, spontaneous watercolor paintings where he starts off super saturated and um, I believe he puts the, the paint in and then kind of swirls it around and then lets things form from there. Those are some interesting videos. I haven't seen them in a while, but um, I do recommend going to check them out. It's good relaxing painting. It was, you know, long day at work. Then we had um, you know, power lifting practice and it's Wednesday so you know, two more days and I haven't painted in a while. Um, so I'm not gonna lie I felt weird when I was wetting my paper. Even the brush texture just didn't feel normal. So um, almost painting daily 
or every other day is almost probably a requirement for me. So hopefully I'll get back into the swing of things. You know, during the whole lockdown, they, um, you know, I was doing a painting a day or two, you know, and putting videos up. But, you know, with work starting to back up, it's been busy. So I'm trying to get a dark established. And it seems like this color combination is giving me trouble in that regard. So I may introduce a second color as to darken it up. And we'll see. Let's play around with lifting and texture. And whenever you do this, whenever you're wiping back and forth and lifting and adding in, be careful of the stamping and repeated pattern effect. So try to mix the paper up. This is just a kitchen towel. I'm guessing people use sponges for this. I've never used a sponge with watercolor, even though I have like two or three. I've, I've bought them from Hobby Lobby and whatnot. They just never made their way. grab more alizarin and see what happens there. That's what I might have. Let's, let's experiment with that before we start relying on adding a third color. I'll pour out some more fresh alizarin from the tube. And this is um, the Cotman brand. You can get these, the larger tubes, for, let's say, 5 or $6 from you know, either Blick or Jerry's Artorama or other art sources online. So this is straight from the tube of Lizarin. Let's see how that lays over it. And since we're going wet and wet, you just want to bear in mind that you want to increase the pigment load and decrease water concentration or you get the cauliflowers. We have an increased concentration of water laying right here and that's going to cause a cauliflower. Let's see if I, I don't know if you can see that bead in the video. But let's let that kind of move around. I am getting a little bit of a Christmassy vibe with the alizarin on top. Let's bring out some reflections. Let's make this a land's edge right here. Good. And a little bit of texture in the sky. And I'll do that. First of all, to kind of pull up that extra excess water. Just because I really just don't want that cauliflower effect. And two, just as kind of a little experimentation. Okay, so this was the alizarin on top. of areas that are quite wet. Let's, um, let's pour out some fresh sap green straight from the tube. And we'll lay that on top and see how that looks. All right. 
Got some fresh sap green. I didn't clean. I haven't cleaned the brush at all, so we are gonna have some of that alizarin there. But I just realize, you know, I, I just don't like cleaning the brush that much. I don't know why. Maybe it takes too much time. Once heard about a um, famous painter who, like an, an art teacher in college, mentioned it. I don't know if it was a true story or not, but it was, an, I guess, an oil painter, and he um, would have a whole bunch of brushes, and he would use his one brush for one mark, and then drop it on the floor. And um, you know, I guess the uh, what's the word for people that are learning apprentice. I guess the apprentice would come in and um, pick them up and clean them up. Now whether that story is true or not, I don't know. In the context of the story, I don't remember. But in hindsight, just kind of talking about it now, it probably had something to do along the lines of um, make your brush stroke count. You don't have one, put, try to put in one brush stroke instead of three to get something done. It seems to be a common theme in a lot of art theories. You know, like fast and loose is all focused on not sitting there and tickling the painting and spending hours on it. And, um, you know, the Chinese painting, the brush painting, is very focused on the whole concept of minimal brush strokes. This is rolling up this paper towel and see if we can lift and create compositionally I'm not too excited about this one the Christmas like um, color combination, which I, I don't think you could ever escape from, is there. I think the brown mixture helps pull away from that. And we don't have that Christmas illusion, the Christmas effect with the uh, Venetian red which is an earth red and green. Then when we are using this combination, the uh, alizarin, and I don't get a Christmas effect with the thalo green with it, thalo green and quinacridone rose. So I'm not quite sure what it is. But, lost my train of thought and I apologize for that oh yeah so you know down in Louisiana we've been having a million hurricanes and right now there's a hurricane hitting New Orleans and I was looking at the news on the phone and there was a power outage map for New Orleans and red was out green was on and it was speckled all over the place and then looking at it, and I was like, looks like, first of all, like Christmas. And um, I was just wondering how, you know, so many places had managed to keep on having power this far into that hurricane. Because that last storm, we lost power pretty quick and had to ha we're out of power for uh, two days. And the one before that. So, yeah, Delta and Laura knocked out power for us for two days, both ones. This storm, we didn't really see any effects from this one. And we're on the uh, eastern side. No, sorry, the western side. So I'm just playing around compositionally right now, just uh, seeing where I want things to go. It's very kind of in our face with it. So what I'm going to do, and looking at it through the, the camera itself, there is 
less of that Christmas vibe than when I'm actually just sitting here looking at it, so I'm not sure if there's a lighting effect on it. I'm going to pause it. I'm going to do a dry off, and then we'll start right back up. Well, that uh, dry off was quite brutal. I had um, quite the tonal shift take place. So, uh, while I was drying off the blow dryer, I, you know, looking at the painting, I'm happy that did that wash of the alizarin to begin with. It seems like with the two color painting that for kind of a little trick to start things off is to do a wash in that solid color and it just gives an overall feel to the painting. The sap green, pure sap green right here, not a fan of that. So we're gonna push the sap green in different directions and we're gonna play on the browner side of things with this mixture. I'm also going to put a new foreground element here to create the illusion of depth. So dry brushing this in, this will dry. Like uh, tonal shift won't be as bad as the uh, wet and wet. And laying this on top. I believe will give us just a nice depth to it. Not having too much variety with the color that I'm putting in, kind of just all on that brown side. We'll play around with it in a moment. I wonder if, uh, and this is just speculating, theoretically, we wouldn't really need too much variation in this, being that it's along the edge of the painting. And we could do just more trunks and stems and kind of let it be more silhouette. This is the number one rigger. I grabbed this instead of the number four because it's working in the background and I wanted thinner lines. I wish that I grabbed it for this. In fact, I'm gonna switch over to it. mix does seem a little bit greener so there's a little variation how well that's showing up not sure this right here is greener than that the redder side let's see let me take a moment to think about things the landmass here. Using the side of the brush, so this is a good time to kind of demonstrate the versatility of a rigger. Um, the side brush effect. tree. I'm going to try to keep this video short. So we'll see what we can get in with this guy and then we'll do a dry off and see if that has anything that needs to be played around with. This just come back in. Somebody had asked, how do you get the hake so worn and old without using it daily for like five years? 
Um, well, this hake was used, I don't know if it's two or three years now, but the Ron Ranson hake, which you can get, I think Cheap Joe's Art Supply has it. I'm not sure what other art sources have it. And you just Google it, Pro Art or Ron Ranson uh, hake. It's um, kind of pre-worn. Me and other people, oh, by the way, there's a Facebook page dedicated to the Fast and Loose and using the Hake brush. Uh, Ron Ranson, um, Disciples of Ron Ranson, Ron Ranson's Disciples, sorry. I don't know why I messed it up. Uh, check it out if you're interested in this type of painting. And uh, it's a really good community. Anyway, I know in the past we had discussed what would need to be done to a hake in order to achieve this type of um, effect as opposed to a looser, softer, this isn't a hake, it's a uh, mop brush, but to get this to achieve that effect of the sharpness. And I think some people have talked about potentially in videos or interviews, Ron Ranson had said, they maybe soaked it in gum arabic and let it dry and then sanded the edge i'm not sure i don't know if anybody went beyond us just talking about it to try to emulate it i do have gum arabic in fact i have some right here i can try to find a hake and experiment with that but honestly for one brush it's really not expensive um, at most between ten to twenty dollars, but it's it's really worth it if you're interested in using a hake brush. And I'm just scraping a little bit of the card just to get some variety. Even scrape a little rock in there. Let me um, pause this and do a dry off real quick. Okay, during that dry off, I decided that um, we would just end the painting here. Um, we were playing around with, just remember, the Cotman um, Alizarin Crimson and Da Vinci brand Sap Green. Um, and it, yeah, like I said, Figure, just stop it right there. Could continue more over it. At this point, we could probably switch to um, some darker colors or mix in ultramarine blue and or thalo blue and darken from that aspect or play around with Payne's gray. But I figured time-wise, this is probably the best we can achieve in you know a shorter time frame. And looking at it during that drying. First and foremost, and I mentioned it before, I'm really happy that we did that wash of the Elizabeth Crimson initially and just give that overall glow in the sky. Um, back in here, we see that lighter mixture, wet and wet, of those two colors getting that brown aspect, more on the greenish side back in here. I do like the soft glow on the water, but that edge right there is also really cool and that white water so uh, I'm wondering if just maybe just applying masking fluid or masking tape or um, when you do your wash leaving an area dry so wetting everything and leaving that dry area would be um, a good effect I think that'd be nice Looking in here, I know I had pointed out I wasn't a fan of just the pure sap green with this combination, and I think that's what pushed it more towards the Christmas is the pure sap green, despite the fact that the red is more Christmassy as well. I think that's the culprit. Um, the after drying off and then painting over it, we did get our darker values. Almost, um, it almost looks black in this area. So that's really cool that we were able to start achieving that. And I think playing around with it more and going beyond 
the 20 minutes of painting that we did, we could then mix those darkers and keep going with it. But this is kind of just initial stage, just go for it and play around with it. Um, and then from there you could play further. So as always, you guys are welcome to follow along with these paintings. And if anything, anybody ever says, hey, I'd like to buy that from you, anything you follow along with, you're more than welcome to um, sell. So you have my express commit permission to do that. Um, also, so the scraping, another textural element. So yeah, it's pretty fun. Um, I think that I would play around with this further, and like I said a few times, at this point, then take it further and darken things up. So we'll end it at that. Oh, I realized I didn't tilt the camera. Sorry about that during that whole speech. So you get didn't even get to see the white down there that I was talking about. Sorry about that. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Um, wow, after making a, I think the word is a gaff, making a gaff like that mistake. Um, I'm still going to ask you to please like, subscribe, follow, um, leave comments, uh, questions, any um, thing you'd like to know or anything you'd like me to cover. All right, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.